The Backup is where we talk about the most hard-hitting news of the week, as long as it's related to video games and no one mentions Euro 2021. And the news, of course, is sponsored by exclamation mark Tim, who I realized, like, uh, Tim, that's not actually Tim's handle, exclamation mark Tim. is Tim Bachulka. Uh, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. But he's, at the very least, Tim. He's only exclamation mark Tim because that's the command that gives you the lpa.dev forward slash back pocket link. But now that's what we've officially called him. Uh, it's also like, yeah, it's it spins the emphasis that you would think in traditional grammar is it'd be Tim exclamation mark. Like, that's how he would be excitable. But yeah. this way, it's the excitement comes before the Tim. Exactly. Uh, which read into that what you will. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as usual, the Back Podcast is brought to you by Hero Pocketeer Tim from the Learn Programming Academy. Get your exclamation mark Tim's out in the chat because the Learn Programming Academy offers classes covering the entire range of programming that are easy to watch for all skill levels and they're almost all $20 or less. You can head to lpa.dev forward slash back pocket by simply putting exclamation mark Tim in the chat or going to that URL by yourself to download the custom back pocket info guide on everything Tim has to offer and become the coding genius you didn't always know you were. Uh, Pete would have had an appreciation for a bit of Tim work this morning when Absolutely. green things were playing instead of videos in the in the back podcast vmix setup, but you figured it out by yourself because you're a hero. Well, I found a workaround, but Tim would have just coded a solution That's true. Uh, and that would have been very handy. Um, Tim, That's why if we're five you, minutes late because Tim wasn't you, with us. Yeah, if you know how to stop green things appearing in the stream, then just send us that code. Uh, all right. <laughs> Speaking of disappointing starts to the day, last <laughs> week we, uh, we got the news that there is a new Switch coming and uh, it's not what I wanted. I'm worried that I'm still going to buy it because that's just the kind of pathetic human being that I am. But <laughs> it is the Switch brackets OLED model. Described as, quote, the newest member of the Nintendo Switch family, it's a 7-inch handheld with an OLED screen, boasting an improved kickstand, better audio, a wired LAN port in the dock, and 64 gig of internal storage. Angus Ronald, mm. we all love the Switch here. I feel like you probably love the Switch the most because you're willing to make the biggest sacrifices to games to play the Switch. Is sure. this what you were hoping for when all the rumors of a new Switch were swirling? Well, obviously not. Uh, I don't think anyone was <laughs> expecting this. It's strange. You're right. I do love my Switch. <laughs> I probably love the idea of the Switch more than I actually end mm. up playing it. I think you mm. probably play the Switch more than the three of us. Uh, you've got the light model, which they released for a, little, a couple of, a year or two ago now, um, which was like a an interesting pivot for them to create a model that was non-dockable and was purely handheld but it's still mm -hmm. obviously it's a beautiful little piece of hardware this uh i don't think is for anyone uh <laughs> I, I don't know who this is for that's the main confusing part for me because the idea that they've created one where realistically the only specs that are interesting or worth noting are the bigger oled screen um but in terms of grunt, there's absolutely nothing going on under the hood that's any different from the original Switch. Um, when you think about it, it's like this is purely for it is purely for people playing in the handheld mode because of that screen uh, improvement. Um, but you're also looking at the, it's still the same resolution. It's not like uh, then it hasn't upped mm. the resolution in any way. So if anything, there has been speculation about the idea of it not looking as crisp as the original Switch because you're now stretching that resolution, you know, your pixel per density over a larger space. So that might not look as nice. You dock this thing, it still runs exactly as the original Switch does. You take this thing in handheld mode. Yes, it's a little bigger, but like that's what the light's for. The light is for people who only want to go in handheld mode. So like if you have an original Switch, I just have no interest in upgrading to this in any way. I think the white paint job might be the thing that people are like, ooh, that's a bit different. The dock is a little different. Um, but it's coming in at more expensive than the Switch was originally, I believe, um, as a price point. So who this is for is... I would speculate people who never came into the Switch round one. It's that sort of thing of like, if you went to go and buy one now and you didn't have one, mm -hmm. this would be the model that you would go and pick up. Um, I did hear a really interesting chat uh, on another podcast I listened to where they talked about the idea that they speculated that this is because possibly Nintendo were in the plans to make a more powerful Switch, a Switch 2 or whatever, a Switch Pro. Um, 
and had access to OLED screens, larger screens, all that kind of stuff. But due to the chip shortages that we're seeing globally, that there was nothing that, that they didn't have the resources to put together a more powerful switch. So what they did have or what they were able to make was this. And mm. therefore, it feels mm. kind of like whether or not that's true, I don't know. But it does feel like there's some water to that, like wait to that argument of it just being like what we could do. Um, some of the other stuff on the side of it, like the bigger kickstand is just like, no one cares. No one, like the kickstand is rubbish and it will continue to be rubbish. And it's the worst way to play a switch. Um, there's like an ethernet port in the back. These are things that should have been in the round one switch. So Mm. to call it like, I mean, yeah, it's not a switch two. it's a switch OLED edition is exactly what it is. An undercooked kind of like just scramble to piece together what they had. Uh, and maybe it's what they're using to just replace the standard switch, but does nothing to interest me. And I will not fall for it, and I will not buy one, Nick. I implore <coughs> you to do the same <laughs> by not buying one. I implore you, Nicholas. Uh, part of it as well is that the switch is old now. It's like, uh, <clears throat> when did it first drop? 2017? 17? Yeah, <laughs> 2007. Okay. It's 2007 already. We are due so, <laughs> for an upgrade. Yeah. In terms of like manufacturing, these parts are getting old. It could be more expensive to use the original parts than mm. build a new thing entirely, right? Yeah, so totally. it's like yeah, there's, interesting. Inc- there's probably a manufacturing incentive for Nintendo to modernize the build. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that means that we get a better screen, which is nice, uh, but there's little incentive for them to go. Well, let's spend a let's l- make a loss on hardware again and spend a shit ton of money making this a beefy unit mm-hmm. when we know in two more years' time we're going to get whatever the next Nintendo console is. Yeah, and this is just we're going to keep manufacturing these, uh, and it's more expensive to manufacture the older version than it is this new thing because no one's got the presses for that chipset anymore. Yep. So let's just keep using let's let's just use the new one until the end of this cycle. Yep. So that could be part of it as well. Um, it's obviously very disappointing. It's weird to. I mean, I I feel like they did their best to try not to hype up the announcement. They they certainly did. Yeah, like it they was like at seven a.m. US time on Twitter mm, as a thread. Like yeah. that's what that's that's how I drop reactions to the latest episode of Loki. Um, so yeah. <laughs> actually that's not true we do an hour and a half talking about we put more that's true. emphasis on we do a nintendo loki. loki direct totally. <laughs> yeah um, um yeah and and uh yeah they didn't have it at their e3 direct they were like there's no hardware here stop looking um so i feel like it's probably more that they were just they just needed to do a refresh from a manufacturing perspective and yeah. mm. This is a nice upgrade for no, for people who don't have a Switch or who have a bunch of stick drift and are just ready to like refresh their console anyway. <laughs> but, but the pro, uh, but the problem that's so that's my actual problem because mm, like same Joy Cons, it's the same Joy Cons. The yep. the one genuine problem with the Switch is the Joy Con drift, and they're using the same Joy Cons. So it's like you had the opportunity to fix the actual issue. And even if mm. that issue is something that affects people who are vocal about it, but doesn't affect the majority of switches, uh, the I, I feel like just doing right by your consumers should be a priority and going, okay, we're going to make you something that like I've got two switches <clears throat> and four and I bought a second set of joy cons. I've had two sets of joy cons with drift and I just go like, thank, thankfully the switch light doesn't have it because there's nothing I could do about it if it got it. Um, but uh, yeah, so yeah. it's amazing that they haven't changed that. The, and yeah, I think that this was definitely a thing where like reporting and leaks and stuff hyped up. I think with a level of certainty that we were, that everyone felt like, oh no, this is actually going to happen. There's going to be a real boost. So I don't think Nintendo necessarily you know, did anyone dirty in what they did in the lead up to the release of this? Because they were just staying quiet. It's, and not going, on, it's, my, it's not on them to comment on rumor, and they never have. Totally. Like yeah. that's Nintendo's yeah. thing: is they just shut up shop and they're like, "Here's what we do. Here's what we make," and like we're not going to feed into that rumor mill. So yeah, the, wor- the world is the world is the gaming world is turning against Jason Schreier, who <laughs> just <Yeah>. like <laughs> always hypes this shit up. Destri- like the new Silent Hill thing like new hardware and then turns around and goes like i can't believe you got hyped about that it's like he's always just like 
on the pulse, but like he's always tweeting. So it's like, fuck you, Shrier. I know. I, I, and I have like so much respect for Shrier in terms of like totally. everything that he does at all the links. But but the, there have been a couple of things where recently where he's like, I don't know where you guys are getting this idea. It's like, dude, we're it's getting you. it from you. You're, we're getting it's it from you, you. Like, I don't think anyone should be harassing you, but don't wipe your hands of this and be like, I don't know where you got these ideas from. Um, the uh, And Gus, as you said, if you're playing docs, if you mainly play docs, there's literally no reason for you to get this thing because totally. uh, it, yeah. do it doesn't have that improvement. The the bigger screen is nice. I like the white, even though it's going to get filthy in a second. I don't like the mm. fact that the bezel is still black. Like, put a strip of white something around that. It looks weird to me. Like, it looks like add-on cutlers on the side. Like, you've taken a black switch and now added white controllers. Um, That's the nice the, thing about the light, isn't it? That it's a consistent... It's all one color across... Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. it's kind of like it in a shell. Me cl those uh, colorful Game Boy, the uh, Game Boy Color totally, vibes. Yeah. Love um, those. Speaking but, uh, of like, just oh, sorry. Yeah, speaking of like Game Boys and stuff like that. Again, another thing to note is that Nintendo have done this with every iteration, almost every iteration, especially with their handhelds and stuff. Like they they do like the 3DS and then they do the 3D XL and then they do like th these weird kind of iterative things in between that are like kind of for no one, but they all still manage to find a market. It's like, the, I don't mind that it's called the OLED edition or whatever, because if they tried to sex it up and give it some sort of spin, then it would be promising too much. And that's what the, the Switch 2 or the <laughs> Switcher or whatever they were going to call the, the second one. That's its job. Whereas this is just entirely like, no, this is just a, this is a, decimal iteration of of their console and it's nothing new for nintendo so i'm not surprised yeah. but i'm we're all still allowed to be super disappointed <laughs> we are allowed to be uh, well <clears throat> and the last the last thing that i think is actually probably the most disappointing part of this is the the price bump of the fact that mm. it is actually it is going to be more expensive so the the normal switch model is 469 and then this one in australia is retailing for 539 and i understand that the screen is better but it but for all intents and purposes you've kind of just if the intention for this is to just replace the old switch now you have just increased the cost of your console by, and and gi you're giving people something, I guess, but I don't think you're giving people something that necessarily is like... Doesn't want that cost. Yeah, either. yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just interesting to see that uh, it, it's kind of aimed as being something of a replacement of the model, but you don't normally see replacements going up in price. You generally mm. see them going down and giving you some sort of value. So, yeah, anyway, we'll see. I, th all of this is Shreya's fault, but no one should tweet him. That's what we're trying to say. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, moving on to, look, potentially more disappointing things. Um, it wasn't the greatest week for video games. Uh, the, the PlayStation State of Play happened last Friday, 7 a.m. Australia time and Sydney time. And uh, we got a bunch of reveals in here. Now, I've uh, guys, I've dumped everything in the dock here to look at. Sure. Do you want to go through uh, all of these and just talk about what we have an interest in? Um, do you want to? Just pick things. How do, you, how do you want to approach this? Yeah. I mean, Death Stranding, let's start with that. Peter. Let's start with Moss. Um, uh, <laughs> so, we started off. So, there wasn't uh, there wasn't a lot of stuff here that was uh, huge and shocking. But Moss 2 uh, or Moss Book 2 got announced. And Gus, you've played Moss, right? I finished Moss. It's delightful. Um, Moss. And I'm so glad this gets a sequel because it's really charming. The developers who I met and talked to a couple of years ago were super lovely and they're super passionate about this uh, franchise. And I think it's almost like it's a better mascot for PlayStation, even though it is available on Quest and other platforms. Then, I mean, the Astro Bot's great as well, but this just felt like something that Sony should have clamped down on and made like this is their their new mascot for VR and that kind mm. of thing as well, because Quill, the little character in it, is very charming, very animated, very beautiful. And as I said, it's like, it's it's one of those games that pretty much they then took Astro Bot VR and like, I, I feel like whether or not whatever processes were happening or development cycles, it's like, it felt like they took a lot from Moss and put that into Astro Bot in terms mm. of like how to engage with a little third person character running around the world. But um, yeah, I feel like these guys, these developers really set the groundwork for it. And so a sequel, I think that looks adequately upped, but it's also just book two. I feel like they could just have done more adventures and more moss. like just more moss and that's what they're doing. So um, yeah, if anyone hasn't played the original, I, uh, I, I recommend you do because it's really charming and this looks great. 
Uh, yeah, I sure never does. played Moss. I've been meaning to play Moss. It's just one of those things. I think it was like the the hassle of putting all those chords together. I even have Moss. There's no excuse for me to have not have played Moss. Have you got? A, you don't have a quest. It's a. Uh, you don't have a hand. Uh, well, PSVR. 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 No, I've, right. Yeah. I've yeah. got all of them. Yeah. Um, we're not all. Have you got a I've quest? Got both of those. Yeah, I've got a quest. It's in the cupboard right now. Because it's on that. Uh, <coughs> it's on the so, quest. Yeah. That yeah. doesn't have wires. Moss <laughs> one is on the quest. Yeah. I'd okay, recommend good. playing it on that. Uh, and yeah, again, PlayStation VR, I, you know, I don't play on that. And the talks that there is going to be a, a VR update, isn't there? Uh, or there's oh, yeah. going to be compatibility sure. for mm-hmm. the PS5, I should say. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but good that it's out there and good that everyone can play it. Cool. Uh, Peter, are you excited about Arcade Ageddon? Uh No. Uh, Good. Are you? Do you want to talk about it? No, no. I, it's in early access right now. Uh, I, 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 it doesn't really look like uh, the kind of thing that I'm into. But I know that you were potentially into Tribes of Midgard. Yeah, Tribes of Midgard looks like something I could uh, dip my little toes into. Um, it's a like cooperative uh, dungeon crawler, effectively with a uh, as is the trend mm-hmm. uh, Viking skin. Um, Looks like there's a little bit of survival and stuff in it, as well as being like a Diablo homage. So um, I think this could be really fun. I don't think it necessarily sells itself well in trailers. I think it looks pretty generic and okay in trailers, but I can, I'm can. i just imagining the fun of playing it. And I think, I yeah. think there's a lot there. Um, and yeah, there's a, a, quite a few systems in it beyond just like class-based uh, like dungeon crawly combat. Mm. So I think it could be a fun world to traverse. And um, I, I, I do find it annoying they're talking about like season pass stuff before it even comes out. This is this whole trailer is mm. like, and you'll be able to buy seasonal cosmetics. And it's like, okay, calm down. Yeah, I was. The, I, I, I launched the game. Yeah, halfway through watching the state of play and <laughs> this coming up, I was like, have I just missed the release of this game? And it's already been out for six months and it, it, they're actually now just saying this is the first season content um, because it, it really was like, oh, you haven't even, I haven't even got the game yet. And they're like, so you're going to be in here for a while and we're definitely going to sell you things. Uh, yeah, this, this is one. I saw lots of people excited about this and I... I, it doesn't really look like my kind of thing, but I think that potentially you're right that it is one of those games that just like plays so much better than it comes off in a trailer. Because in the trailer, it looks it looks a bit simple. I don't know, Gus, is this your thing? <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm, I agree with you. Like, I, I like a dungeon crawler, and I think a compet- uh, a cooperative one's heaps of fun. Um, what's the the wizard one where you all run around combining spells? Magic. Um, Magica. Ma- Magica, that was heaps of fun and like so this good. obviously looks a little less chaotic and a little more focused. But um yeah, I, I agree with you. I think the art style kind of sits between this sort of uh cell shady style choice versus like I actually like Diablo and those kind of really super dark and realistic and really moody kind of ones as well. I think this kind of yeah, this doesn't this doesn't have me as convinced as one I want to play. But um yeah. I'll pretend I'm going to play it with you guys and then not when it comes up. <laughs> uh, I'll play with Coastal then. Coastal and I will s- run through it together. Yeah, good. <laughs> um, the uh, oh, I totally had I had something fascinating to say in this moment when you oh that's oh, right yeah. it was no it Fist. was someone it was someone in uh in chat it was Blinky saying oh no are Vikings becoming the new zombies will people get sick of they Vikings? absolutely Ooh. are we are seeing yeah, a that's lot a good of Vikings point. <clears throat> I wonder what happened three years ago <laughs> that <laughs> that caused everyone God to of think War. of Vikings. God of War happened. You're totally right. God of but War. But also Hellblade, happened. which isn't necessarily Vikings, but <laughs> the show Viking similar. Nordic. The show the Vikings. Show Vikings. Yep. Yep. Uh, Loki, Loki in Marvel. Yep. yep. Uh, Thor. Yep. Um, uh, the yep. third Thor movie. Yeah. All that shit. Uh, the best name in the state of play was absolutely <laughs> Forged in Shadow Torch, aka Fist. <laughs> which <laughs> great. is just a phenomenal name uh for me a game that didn't really capture my attention beyond the name because for whatever reason oh, what I, I have like i have a visceral reaction to when i see like bunnies and raccoons and basically small fluffy animals with armor and swords and guns i'm like i don't like this sure. i don't i don't like what's happening here and i i will never take your world as seriously as clearly you do but Gus, it's the disagree. human fingers i think you'll see in this mm. trailer obviously sorry for the podcast like really cute character design here but the the, the main 
protagonist is a is a bunny and there's a scene in which he picks up a photo that we're seeing and his fingers are like fleshy yeah. fingernailed fingers i'm like that's not how bunny hands are that's not what bunny hands should look like <laughs> bunny hands should be adorable Damn disgusting right. human hands <laughs> uh, no nick Nick, I'm with you. Like, I usually find just the idea of, like, changing out your characters for woodland creatures is sometimes kind of just, like, an easy way to add a little bit of, like, does, you know, I don't know, change change up to your regular game formula. But I haven't seen a combination of, like, that in, like, steampunk side-scrolling fluid fighter platformer. So... It's definitely a, a genre slash kind of like mix up that I haven't seen before. And I, it kind of works for me. I don't know. I'm, I'm really, I like oh, fluid platformers, like really fast moving <laughs> ones where you chain it all together. And this looks like being super combat heavy and, and the, being a uh, like kind of like it set in an Abe's odd world kind of cool industrial setting with these like very beaten down creatures. I don't know. I like it. For some reason, yeah, this good. just dealt with me. I think it, maybe it might've just been the actual gameplay on top of it. it does look really fun. Um, and that armor yeah. where the bunny's got an actual suit of armor with a giant mechanical fist on the back of it. So you can mm-hmm. three punch things like, I don't know, that was just, that looked like the, 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 the sketch up on the napkin for the idea that made it all the way to the finished product. <laughs> totally. And they're like, why is, are those ears? Sure, it's a fucking bunny. Uh, and then by the end of it, they're like, this is our company mascot now. I don't know. I thought that was great. But they didn't yeah, fix his hands. So that's a worry. <laughs> I think I'm just worried about like my partner walking into the room and saying, what are you playing? And I have to go, <coughs> this. Why are we? <laughs> is there a problem now that any time that we add animals or anthropomorphize animals in a thing, we have to worry about being associated with fairies or fairy culture, which I don't personally, but I feel like it's fine to put animals in games still. Why is that a thing? I don't know. I just find that strange. Uh, no, I, well, like, like from my thing. It's, it's like an easy punchline that. joke for, sorry, say again. Well, if for me, it's not that. I think I think what it is is like you've taken something really cute and then you've you've loaded it up with weapons and armor, and then oh, okay, right, and, and then I don't and I don't really know like and made it then, thick. Yeah, and then t- but then it stops being cute, and it's not that I need it to be cute, but then it, you get a serious, angry-looking rabbit, and then I'm like, I don't believe <laughs> the anger of the rabbit, and and then it feels like you're working against the cute fluffiness of what you've got, but in a way that it's never in the same way. Pete, what was that game that we both didn't like that came out recently? Jazz Jack, uh, Bio Bio Mutant, Death Stranding. <laughs> Biomutant had the same thing where I was like, oh, yeah, I don't, Biomutant I, was a weird one. I agree. This just doesn't jive with what's happening. But yeah, yeah. It's but not I, a furry. I, like, I didn't I have a problem with the friends. world design also, like, or character just, design in that. It was the problem was the game sucked. Uh, yeah, that was yeah. a big problem. Whereas uh, whereas this looks like it's really cool. Like I could I don't play a lot of like side scrolly um action or platform or puzzle games but but every now and then one comes along and it's like i remember when shadow complex came out like that unreal engine yeah so right. i was like that's sick mm-hmm. and uh, you know seeing the new metroid announced i didn't get excited about that at all just because it looks like dog shit on the switch it it's like here's samus is back and in four pixels whereas mm. this is like a next gen looking <clears throat> game mm. um looks really smooth cool animations lots of combat i think could be really fun look yeah, cool. is mad but it's not gonna be good so I reckon it could be good. Also, disclaimer, like, uh, for furries out there, like, good on you, keep it up, whatever floats your boat. I'm not saying I'm anti that. I'm just saying that it was, like, one of those things where it's, like, why is it that people are defensive about that now mm-hmm. and that they mm-hmm. can't be integrated into our gaming worlds without yep. that being a, a somewhat of a, I don't know, a stigma. Anyway, yeah, I think no, it's cute I'm, because I'm, you, do get, you do get scenes with little things, like, before where you see the, like, oppressive, whatever, like, rat guards, like, kicking a little mole. Like, that's when I think it works well because you can now, like, pepper them throughout the whole of your uh games sort of like character design like they can all be different species and stuff that's why you can fu- have some really funny little like side characters and stuff i agree the bunny is probably the most the least appealing part of the whole thing though all right good uh hunters arena <laughs> legends battle royale meets a fighter game um uh let's start with pete this time is this is this one doing anything for you uh, let me just scrub the trailer a little bit to remind me what the hell this one was. Because no, it looks like a Soul Calibur game, but obviously, like with the idea of being in an, in an arena. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Basically, no, this did nothing for me. Yeah. I didn't even pay attention to this when the state of, when I was watching State of Play. There you go. Okay. Uh, good. Yeah. 
Nothing. Don't, I got don't nothing feel obligated to talk about it because the next okay, one then. is a banger, uh, and that is Sifu. Uh, I believe it's Sifu. I, I think that's how yeah, that I'm right. pronouncing this. Yeah, um, which is that fighter, um, sort of like martial arts fighter that got <laughs> revealed at E3, and Leon, when baby. it did get revealed, it was coming out at the end of 2021. Uh, it's this game where you sort of age up, I, I, like between levels, or every time you die, you age up or something. Um, uh, but then <laughs> my favorite part of this trailer, beyond all of it, which is it looks very cool um is at the end they reveal the the date that it's coming out in the same way that they reveal the age up like it's a feature and it goes from 2021 to early 2022 and when that happened i was like oh yeah oh wait no that's not good um but you really you sold it to me in a really effective way the 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 change of the date that it's actually coming out early next year but i'm still yeah. very excited to see what this game is gus uh, totally. Uh, the reason I'm really pumped for this is because it's by the same developers uh, who did Absolver, um, mm. which was a Devolver digital published uh, game that was really ambitious. And again, luckily enough, I got a chance to speak with those developers and they were great. Pete and I, we both did. And like they created this really cool Dark Souls kind of game that was all based on martial arts styles. It was really complex and in a way that could be mastered. I'm not sure if they really nailed it with that game. I think a lot of people played it and loved it. But there's like you upgraded your move sets. You had like all these indicators for how to like block and parry and do all these great kung fu or like <coughs> not kung fu, I don't know fighting styles a mix of um, I think you actually blended them and so they've got like their pedigree in that is is really well researched and I think it just translates better into the current neon urban John Wick kind of inspired setting it just sits in that so much better and probably for what looks like a more linear game as well like an arena brawler versus this like I think uh, Absolver was a much more PV E and PvP focused game. So mm -hmm. I think they've gone with a much more focused <coughs> game here. And on top of that, it just looks fucking sick. Like it looks just so looks good. so it's satisfying cool. to pull off. And again, I, I if they take everything they got out of Absolver and, and like translate it into this setting, um, I think it's just going to be a very viscerally uh, satisfying game to play. <laughs> I just want it now. I don't want it in 2022 or whatever. It's like, Probably. bring it out now. Yeah, let him finish it. Let him finish. <laughs> Let him finish it. <laughs> I reckon uh, that's when we'll want to play it when it's done. I am, yeah, totally. <laughs> but I am excited for this. So yeah, yeah, let's let's get this one right. Um, the next one that they revealed, yeah, super interesting. So Jet the Far Shore, a game we knew about, um, coming uh, so far still confirmed for 2021 according to the end of the trailer. But this is the first like gameplay we saw of Jet the Far Shore, which looks like a very meditative. Very not actual gameplay pops up on screen as you say that. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, very small ship, like uh, explorer. What what kind of game am? What am I actually? I don't know what the what this game it is. It looks like it looks like a version of No Man's Sky before the version that people got mad about. Yes. Cross with flower. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. This, this, I, I, this, I totally the reveal for this one. Was, yeah, the reveal for this was very... I was like, oh, that's what Immense this game racing. is. Um, and and I am intrigued by it. I think that, <clears throat> not to continually be a downer with this one, but I, I am kind of like, I wonder if this is going to be fun. Um, mm. it, 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 like, the ship is so small, the way that you pilot this thing, that it's not. it doesn't really seem like the flight is the challenge here. I am really interested to see what what the game feel of this is like but seeing this i was like oh this is not this is not the thing that i was expecting um it's not that it, that's a bad thing it's just like oh this looks way more like a sort of almost exploratory explo yeah but like pc specific uh it almost has that sort of rts feel to it even though it's nothing like an rts but it just has this very specific technical feel to it i suppose it's, I, yeah. it's a very I, distant I'm, camera when you're piloting around obviously there's some first person <laughs> stuff with the narrative but i think and i mean it looks like we're walking um so we do leave the ships but it looks yeah. like all of the ship based stuff is like you're a tiny little fly on the screen and it's like mm. go and zip around and and like it's it feels more like navigation and scanning than necessarily like arcadey combat or anything yeah. so it'll be interesting what the loop is you're right it could it could come off as being quite boring uh when it's meant to be uh meditative and mm. um you know have that kind of indie sheen of like there's a there's a broader story here that maybe i don't understand wait um yeah 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 uh, I, so, I really 
I, I, I like the idea of if the game's going to try and sort of go for that sense of wonder and or inspiring exploration that you get from like planet exploring kind of games like No Man's Sky and stuff like mm. that. I found like the bits that really dulled <clears throat> me out in No Man's Sky was the being on foot and trekking around and like the minutiae of like doing small tasks on a planet where it's like the thing for me in that game was the zooming out and seeing and flying over this whole planet and i think that's what this game does really well i don't think that i think it is more of a linear game from the looks of it it's not a procedurally generated go and explore planets or anything like that but um if it is like that i really like the idea of just like feeling really small and, and pushing in on that sort of, sort of like emotion of being like being able to traverse a large space which just looks you know like it could go on forever and i think making you a little small fly on the screen flying around kind of like I, I weirdly enough i played like starlink that toys to life game yeah but like the way you flew it, like you didn't do anything uh, very in slight movements on that planet. You just f- zoomed around whole planets constantly. And it just, it made the whole thing feel huge. And like, as I said, very uh, meditative at, at times as well. So I feel like that's what could be cool about this. I, I yeah, like cool. the idea of being a little, a dot, a blip, so to speak. Yeah. Yep. So we'll see. It definitely was not what I expected. So uh, I'm all for trying something new. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see how this one turns out. I'm looking forward um, to it now. I didn't know about it at all. But yeah, yeah good. it's one on my, on my listener. Are you also looking forward to Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles, which uh, I, I promise I promise I will get positive soon, but this was definitely the worst trailer in the whole presentation. <laughs> <laughs> well, then why don't you talk about it? Because it looked like a more you game, Nick, or P. <laughs> yeah, I would just say at least it, it has a cool look. Um, you know, a, a lot it looks of like, exactly a lot like of, the anime for sure. Yeah, yeah. A lot of um, anime styled games. Uh, feel a bit generic in their anime styling whereas this is like really colorful Mm -hmm. in in an area i wouldn't expect like a lot like his orange coat and stuff like that there's obviously some like there's some cool art design it's not just hey we made anime characters there's actually some interesting designer behind it as well yeah totally um uh it's definitely out there for if you love demon slayer the anime then you this game is very yeah, much you. then you'd love this yeah just, um you get to slay demons to. in it you do uh lost judgment is the sequel to the uh judgment series which is um kind of kind of like a yakuza spin-off <laughs> i suppose um the first game followed a lawyer who was disgraced and then goes on to become uh, sort of like solve a crime and a murder by himself outside the law. Uh, a bit of sort of like vigilante lawyer style stuff. Uh, very good. I played about half of it. Uh, like all the sort of like those games, it, it's sort of like a 50 hour RPG that I fell off halfway through. But I, de- I definitely really enjoyed what I played. Uh, Lost Judgment being the sequel to this. It's really interesting. I can't think of another series that has this like. Because this game is like a call and response to Yakuza. Yakuza follows the good, the good bad guy, or the likable bad guys, but it's still about sure. crime bosses and gangs and that sort of thing. And then Lost Judgment is basically exactly the same as a Yakuza game. All the same like mini games which we're seeing on screen now. There's dancing. There's like motorcycle racing. There's robot robot fighting, wars, skateboarding. skateboarding, like all the normal Yakuza weird shenanigans on the side. And also does the same Yakuza thing as having a very serious story with really well-developed characters. But this is like the on the side of the law, even though mm. the, the lawyer so operates outside of it. So it is like, it is a sort of like counterpoint to the Yakuza series, but that's not how they market it. They, they market it as entirely its own series. It's just interesting that like it, the devs kind of just go, okay, we're just going to make that game. Reskin. But- reskin we're just gonna reskin that game as opposed to it being like um lost judgment a yakuza story or something Mm. but big fan of the first game so i'm excited to see how this one turns i mean how many yakuza games are there in the sense that it's it's time for them even if it is purely on the which side are you fighting for uh, like scale of things it's just like it's a way of them to rebrand in some way or another and continue that journey because then you've got yeah because it's like a dragon as well which yeah Yeah, there's there's eight yakuza stories so they've how many times can you like betray a family and and switch sides and have allegiances to this one and that one whereas essentially all they're changing here is like which agency you work for and and who's your boss and who you're backstabbing and off to court with you kind of (laughs) stuff whereas and they've still got like a dragon is doing so well in terms of taking and i imagine i haven't played that but everyone who says plays it says it's fantastic and in that one you are a yakuza member are you 
or yep. like you are a crime. Yeah. So that that's going like that's where we're going to take the crime family stuff down the absolutely batshit crazy area, and we're going. We lost Gus. Yeah, I, I was like, was that me? Did I click something? Uh, me too. I, I was freaking out. <laughs> uh, but <clears throat> the other the other thing I'd I'd point out as well is like it's it's cool that the the reskin idea I think is better than you know say um, I don't know if you remember the true crime series. It was like true crime streets of LA. Here's a yeah, company's right. take on um, Gus had a blackout. His power's gone. <laughs> Yeah. Hopefully he returns, but if not, he'll stay clutching at the camera <laughs> until the end of the show. <clears throat> um, that was a take on you're a cop in GTA as opposed to a criminal in GTA. Um, <clears throat> but uh, and and I really enjoyed them, but they were they didn't execute as big an idea as GTA could because yep. how do you keep up with Rockstar and GTA as a franchise? Whereas Yakuza being able to go. Well, let's flip. Let's see the other side of the coin and have the whole engine at their disposal. Everything, all the assets and everything they've already totally. built at their disposal. It's a much easier way to to do the flip side, yeah. um, which is cool. I really like it. I do like. I was excited by the start of this trailer in a courtroom. Uh, there's going to be like tense performances and cool like in court action, mm. and I think most of the game will obviously be on the streets. Uh, throwing lobsters at people but um i wish more of it was about this dark story in a yes. in a uh yeah in a court it is funny that like all the yakuza games are about a uh, criminal who is trying their best to be a good person and then the judgment games are like you're a good guy who needs to go outside the law and become the bad <laughs> guy um but i totally agree like the best parts of judgment was the the legal side of it and I, and I would love to see a game that has that's like a, you know a big step above something like Phoenix Wright where it takes this sort of like very serious topic this kind of engine and stuff but it's much more about that that legal storytelling because we already have the yakuza games for all this fun side stuff but still i'm definitely going to play this because like i said fan of the first one uh and then unfortunately yeah. gus is gone uh, because of the blackout just we should have started with death uh, because totally. death now i can just talk shit about it though that's true <laughs> Um, we got we got information about what this fabled, n not really a director's cut, director's cut is going to have. I'll just run through everything that it, it's adding, and then we can and then we can talk about how we feel about that. Uh, remastered for PS5. Obviously, we're going to get new battles, advanced combat mechanics that include an upgraded melee, uh, something called the Mesa gun, mounted machine guns, and a firing range uh, for practice, and then additional delivery support for your cargo. There's a cargo catapult where you basically just put a package in and fling it across the map. A support <coughs> skeleton uh, that helps you carry more stuff. Buddy bot is like a little robot that you can ride. Uh, and a jump ramp for motorcycles. And there's a fragile racing circuit so you can race motorcycles around. New story missions and it's coming out on September 24th. Um, yeah. Pete, uh, Pete I, know, I know how you feel about this game, but this watching this did make me go, maybe I do want to do the three men and a, and a, and a BB, or at least two men and a BB, and uh, we put a picture of Pete up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, look, I think if... Um, I th it doesn't sound like there's much here for people who have played through the game to incentivize going back in. It feels like little bits of like quality of life that would have been useful while they were trudging across giant planes. Yeah, totally. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it like I think it would be nice for people jumping in the first time. Maybe there's a few extra tools to make it a little less laborious um, for someone like myself who just put it down because I was like, "You don't respect me. <laughs> mm -hmm. You don't respect my time." Um, so if we can tighten up the in between the stories and also just remove all of the story then mm. um that's the peter burns cut okay good. it's three minutes of going like we made a game about postal services and i'd be like that's pretty cool well done that's good that's good that's a that's a short little fun indie game um uh yeah it definitely i'm i'm currently playing persona 5 royal and even in the first like three hours you could just tell there's so much new 
content here that wasn't in the original Persona 5. And it really is like, if you loved Persona 5, you want to go back and play Royal because it adds so much. Whereas I think yeah. you're right that even though they're talking about new story missions here, it's like that it was so incidental. And really like a lot of this stuff, the thing that made me go, oh, maybe I'd go back to this was cargo catapult support skeleton buddy bot jump ramp. Things where I'm like, oh, I could get to the story faster using these yeah. things. Maybe that yep. is actually what I need. So, yeah. And I'll then th skip the eight minute Guillermo del Toro monologue. Yeah, do that as well. Uh, where he <laughs> keeps, uh, what was it? Oh, where everyone- I where remember, he, when you're interacting uh, with the- Yeah, but but the, the thing was that uh, everyone knew that uh, that he doesn't like to be touched and then everyone tries to shake his hand. Tries to shake his hand? And it's yeah. like, but you know I don't like to be touched. So this is that you're crossing a lot of boundaries here. Um, and then the big sort of, well, I guess Sony sort of framed as the king hit uh, because it ended the show with an eight-ish minute trailer, uh, gameplay trailer and demo for Deathloop, which I am still super excited for, but I couldn't even make it all the way through this because I just, I don't want... I'm kind of like, I'm very over, enough. yeah, getting explained to me what Deathloop is. Whereas the thing about it is it very much feels like one of those games that you need to either be playing or watched from the beginning and know really what's going on. Like jumping into these like halfway through gameplay loops is just like, here's some cool gameplay as opposed to the fact that it's all about figuring out this full video game sized uh, Rube Goldberg machine puzzle. Uh, is very hard to convey why that's cool in an eight minute gameplay demo, but they keep trying to do it. And it's like, if yeah. the game was out already, we we just know that it, hopefully it's cool. Um, it's like when you're trying to explain something to some someone or like you're trying to explain why you like a film or TV show or something to someone, you can tell that they're losing interest and then mm. you try harder to explain it yes. and you go deeper and deeper into more granular detail. And it's like, I'm just, Step back, you, like I'll, it's on the list. I'll watch it. It's on the it. list. Like, it's on the it. list. Totally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but uh, uh, like that's that's totally the problem. Is that they like they're not? It seems like they they're not giving Arcane the benefit of the the audience the benefit of going. We know Arcane's going to put something cool together, mm. and the fun of this game is going to be going like, oh, they did that. Mm. You don't need to tell me that they did that. I'm going to totally. find out when I play it. And that's yep. going to be the only way to understand it. And it's going to be the, the the most fun way to discover it rather than being told it ahead of time. So I feel like they're just, they're damaging the people's kind of first impressions now yep. with more and more information. It's like, we know it's going to feel great because you guys do great games. So just let us fall into it now. But it's hard because, you know, the, they started the promo campaign so early. Yeah. It's still not finished. Um, and COVID, you know, I'm sure played a part in that. And also, a little bit of the wind's been taken out of the sails of this, like, you know, big exclusive for uh, PlayStation or exclusive launch window for PlayStation. Now that it's a Bethesda title, that's exactly. been like, you know, it's it's. I was I was actually surprised that they did finish with it and go like, let's give it ten minutes of our show because, um, you know, while they do have that exclusive window still, it's like, it's, <laughs> it's sad. It's like, <laughs> it's it's almost a promo for a Microsoft Studio, but it's yeah. not. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it's an it's an interesting the analogy. Is like you, you you you're going to the prom with someone, but in in between them saying yes to going with you, they've started dating in real life someone else. Oh, so it's like you're just yes. going, you're just going, and <laughs> and they're on your arm, but you know that they're going home with someone else. <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. And, and and it's like there is a there is a clock on this, and so yeah. however much however much fun you have with this, it's bittersweet fun. No matter what got happens. Three <laughs> Three rounds of the nut bush for me to win you over. <laughs> 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 Amazing. Uh, three rounds of the nutbush is now all I'll think about when I play this game in a couple of months' time. Uh, okay, moving on now. So that was the state of play. We're back to Jason Jason Schreier now because yeah, he broke a story at Bloomberg, but this one got <clears throat> confirmed almost immediately uh, as being 100% true. And it got confirmed by Ubisoft because the story that uh, Shreya broke was that we're getting a new Assassin's Creed game sometime in the future that is going to become a massive online platform that evolves over time, <coughs> according to people familiar with the development. So basically what Shreya uncovered, Ubisoft came out and 
confirmed some of this stuff. They didn't confirm the details, but they confirmed that they're working on it um, uh, and that it will evolve over time. Whereas previous Assassin's Creed games, each are sort of like set in their own historical setting and you know, <coughs> modern a modern time as well. Infinity will contain multiple settings with room to expand to others in the years following its debut. Uh, and then uh, you're going to be able to bolt on more content. So I think the analogy in the article was that they were talking more, it was kind of like a Fortnite style, the game evolves over time. But the first thing that came to mind for me was Destiny, where there's like a hub area and then yeah, it sounds like it, there there are sort of like planets or areas or historical time periods or however you want to frame that 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 you just go okay we're released a new expansion and then we've like added a new and I'm just going to say like world let's say yeah um yeah. Uh, there's been a lot of debate uh, there's there's a there's a whole other side to this which we'll get to at the end about like how it's combining the studios working on this but just from like a gut reaction pete to hearing what kind of assassin's creed game it, uh, the series is going to turn into is this something that is appealing to you yeah i think on paper it sounds really cool um i think the danger of it is that you know they've they've been able to iterate on assassin's creed um it's mechanics it's it's game feel um, particularly in this new engine since Origins, um, quite a bit. Uh, I haven't played enough Valhalla to to have an opinion about whether this is the best Assassin's Creed has ever felt. Mm -hmm. um, but if Infinite is, um, then uh, then absolutely I'd want to play all sorts. And and I think Lucas pointed out in the chat it's kind of what uh, Black Flag uh, set up this abstergo hub mm. and it was like here's all these nodes that are going to unlock of samurai assassin's creed totally. and whatever mm. there was like all these different t like periods of history that are like this will be cool to adventure and you're going to go to you, you know we've already done the crusades but probably back to the crusades mm. <laughs> and all that kind of stuff so i would i think it's a really cool idea i think it's a cool model um as a you know live service thing to go like you own the core game. Maybe I don't want to play one part of the game, one DLC, one expansion, because yep. like one new world, because I'm just not feeling Assassin's Creed at the moment, mm -hmm. but I know the next one's going to hook me in. And then that might pull me back into play the rest of that other season. Yeah. Um, so I, I think, I think Assassin's Creed is a good one to do that in because for me as well, it was like Valhalla, the reason I didn't play Valhalla was just so big. Mm. Um, and it's not that I don't want to play it. I just I'm daunted by the prospect of playing through it all. Yep. Um, so smaller <clears throat> nodes, I think, will be nicer than having this huge story that's so cool. Uh, probably easier to execute from a um, narrative perspective as well to just shrink it down and go like, here's a here's one of the best side missions. Go and play mm. that. <laughs> I to, yeah. Yeah. So I like from. I kind of think Assassin's Creed is almost the perfect series to do this with. Its lore is built into the idea that you basically, like, characters just download into these hubs and go play them. Yeah. So, from a lore perspective, you it's not like it's suddenly weird that this is happening. I think that um, Val it, it, even if you haven't played Valhalla, it, this is the teams that are going to be working on this are the Origins uh, Odyssey Valhalla team. So, it's basically the new wave of Assassin's Creed is what this is encompassing. So if you liked any of those games, that's what they're going to continue to feel like. And I think there has been almost universal acceptance or not acceptance, but universal praise for like where the series is headed from a gameplay perspective. And even if people have issues with some of the stuff and how big they are and whatever, whatever, it's kind of like Origins really kicked off a new wave of Assassin's Creed that most people seem to be really happy with. Uh, yeah. I And I totally agree with you that what I hope this is is that it's more like a bifurcation of the thing, all the stuff in Assassin's Creed. So it's not necessarily that you're getting less stuff, it's that you can access those things in more discreet ways. You can mainline the story in the same way you do a Destiny expansion where you go, okay, cool, I'm gonna get like eight to 10 hours of story here. And then there's a bunch of side quests as like my second thing that I can choose to go do if I wanna do that. And then the third thing underneath that is like the multiplayer, whether it's like raids in Valhalla style thing, or like th there's more sort of like working towards 
just stuff for people who want to continue playing in this world. And and then that way, in order to see the whole story, because the whole story of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you do need to play 80 hours to get to the end of the story. It's not like you can <laughs> skip most of that. So I think by yeah. changing that, it's, it's an interesting way. From a development perspective, if, like financially, it totally makes sense because they are taking a huge risk year to year, even though like Assassin's Creed games come out like once every year and a half at the moment even though they sell really well, it's still like a huge risk for a company to be hinging on these games. And I've seen a bunch of reports about Ubisoft where they are, they're an enormous uh, developer and publisher. They're independent, but they are kind of living game to game. And if one of these big games doesn't hit, they're really in trouble. And by making a, making a world that can run uh, where you've built the base technology and then you bolt on essentially really elaborate DLC financially it's just way more sustainable for them to do they already know how many people are already playing the game so it's kind of like we can feel pretty strongly that this amount of people are going to come across this new piece of DLC that we add uh, so I think that for me this is exactly how I would want Assassin's Creed to be and is much more approachable the other side of yeah. this is that it's taking Montreal and Quebec and it's putting them together and it's kind of homogenizing them as developers. It, it removes the ability for these people to potentially put their own little spin on something because they are going to be one mega studio. And there has been, as part of that Bloomberg report, there has been some divisive feelings within Ubisoft about this that some uh, some employees uh, sort of spoke to Bloomberg on a um, uh, on a um anonymous basis and said that they're tired of working on these huge productions and they weren't crazy about the idea of working on something like infinity which is the most ambitious version of this to date and because it's a yeah. live service game you're constantly having to maintain keep engaging with this thing so uh there has been some rankling from the developers within the studio who are like this is this is not necessarily what we want to do because we are signing up for something that is years and years and years of maintaining as opposed to you know multiple years of developing a game but then you sort of put it to bed and move on to something else yeah yeah i mean it's uh we can't speak for them they've spoken for themselves so yeah yeah i mean i think it, it sounds good to me as a consumer um and hopefully it's not so bad hopefully things there's still wriggle room for innovation and um, the creativity that they want to express. I think that, I, I think, you know, there's still going to be heaps of room for creativity in terms of design and, um, and the kinds of like the, the look and the look of the game, the co it's the code that's going to get locked in. Like, yeah, yeah. There might be someone who wants to do a creative bit of coding, but it's like, well, that's going to break the rest of the game. The rest <laughs> yeah, totally. of the nodes you can't. Yeah. Um, so I think that's probably where the issues lie. It's like, you just have to, you're basically just maintaining servers at this point if you're a coder. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. Uh, so it's still apparently years off and it's going to take a while. We may see another Assassin's Creed game before that, but this is where they're headed. Ubisoft have been pretty vocal over the last six months about they want to move to this live service model. So, uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, so many games want to do the Destiny thing. And Destiny is really one of the only games that can do the Destiny thing. I think if any other game has the potential for it, it is something as big as Assassin's Creed and something as already built into the idea of people as being like, we're just going to bolt in completely new content. Uh, and it can be from so many very different places, worlds, timelines, whatever. So, yeah, I think it's a good choice of IP to do this with. Um, okay, let's yeah, burn through the last three stories because they're, they're all pretty light. But um, uh, we got some word about Grand Theft Auto 6. Apparently, it is still in early development and may not release until 2025. But uh, leaker Tom Henderson, uh, he's a Battlefield and Call of Duty leaker, not really known for Rockstar stuff. But he put out a sort of 10-minute video. And again, this is another Jason Schreier adjacent story <laughs> uh, it, that it's going to be released in 2025. The details for Grand Theft Auto 6, according to Henderson, is that the game will take place in modern setting that includes Vice City in some capacity with a map changing over time in the same vein as Fortnite. And it's also rumored that GTA 6 will continue with multiple playable characters, including a female protagonist who will take on a hacker role. Uh, are there many surprises here for you, Pete, that GTA 6 is going to be uh, handling their single player like that? Uh, like maybe the changing map is an interesting thing. i uh, not surprised that they'll go with multiple playable characters again. It was a really 
dynamic way of telling a story about a group of thieves. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought that was cool. Uh, I think I'd, I've already heard the rumor that Vice City was the next setting anyway, like months ago. I think it's just kind of been that's the, on the boiler. Um, so love Vice City. Looking forward to getting back there. Neons are going to look great with ray tracing. Yep. Um, so, yeah, very cool. Um, yep. uh, still so early. So early. 2025 uh, is a very, very long time away. And it's obviously that they're still working on it. And yeah, I'm I'm happy that they're doing that multiple protagonist thing because we just haven't seen that. It's so ambitious storytelling wise. Yep. We just haven't seen many games do it uh, and telling one story through three perspectives. So yeah, I'm, I'm into that. And who knows, like GTA Online is just such a huge beast that who knows what the evolving Fortnite-esque world is going to be like, but we'll find out in four or five years time. Uh, before that, we are going to be getting a fable though, because Phil Spencer went on the IGN Unlocked podcast and uh, sort of spoke about their uh, the state of the Xbox first-party RPGs. He was talking about Avowed, uh, Obsidian's Avowed series, but he also touched on Playground Games' uh, Fable series and then also Bethesda's uh, Elder Scrolls VI. So the um, uh, talking about the Fable series, though, mentioned that it will be coming out before Elder Scrolls VI, that Elder Scrolls VI is still very far away, but we will be getting uh, Fable sooner rather than later. And I think that when I was sort of reading about him talking on this on the pod, it is like between Avowed, uh, Obsidian, renowned RPG maker, between Avowed, Skyrim, or, or Elder Scrolls, and Fable, uh, Microsoft are in a great position when it comes to RPGs and fantasy games. Yeah, and um, Starbound. Like, yeah, totally. That's of not fantasy, but another massive RPG. Yeah. So it's like there's so many on the boiler that are going to be, you know, in in Microsoft's mind, hopefully as successful and long lasting as a Skyrim, mm-hmm. um, and and for you know players, hopefully as interesting and um, and deep as a Skyrim is to play for a long time. Um, I think f- I'm hoping Fable is not big. I'm hoping it is uh, refined and um, a as the other ones were yep. a, a more linear um, delivery. But uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. I'm excited that Fables sooner than later. Same compared to some of the others. So because um, we've just been missing it for so long. Yeah, so I'm, good. I'm so excited <laughs> as well. Yeah, I'm just looking up on now on how long to beat Fa- the first Fable, uh, like main story, 12 and a half hours. Uh, Fable Starfield, 3 was yeah. 13 hours and Fable 2 was 13 hours. So that's just main story stuff. And then if you did like main and side quests, it kind of hit between 20 and 25, which is exactly what I want from this kind of thing. Uh, I'm excited like you. We're getting Fable sooner rather than later because I'm, I'm really keen to see what a new version of that world is like. Uh, and so uh, we'll know more when those games come out. And then finally, uh, it was a week of just like lots of announcements about video games. The last T te- uh, and the last story we've got here is a tease for a new RoboCop game coming in two years time in 2023. Matt Wales from Eurogamer writes that RoboCop Rogue City, which released on PC, uh, which is set for release on PC and unannounced console sometime in 2023, is the work of developer Treyon, who are the responsible studio for Terminator Resistance and Rambo the video game, and will feature an original story based on the events of the first three RoboCop films. I I don't have a lot of affinity for RoboCop. I felt like Gus is probably the guy who would have been most excited about this one. <clears throat> um, I think I do, so. You, you, do, but what I do know about RoboCop is RoboCop is uh, living in a hell. Like he's it is it is awful to be RoboCop. The character of RoboCop is kind of like a tortured character who, uh, in some ways, wants to just die. And so uh, it's interesting that that is kind of the protagonist of your video game is someone who is in in many ways a monster who, uh, and, and then also obviously the environment in which police are seen in 2021 and launching a game about being the most murderous police officer. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> um, it's an interesting timing, to say the least. Uh, I don't really know much about Robocop. I know I watched the first one uh, when I was too young to watch the first one because I believe it was R here. Yeah, it was um, intense. Yeah, and it was like pretty bloody and violent and like, you know, some good practical sacks full of blood thrown at the front of cars and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know whether the inner torment was 
a part of the story until the reboot. Um, it probably was in two and th- three, maybe even in one, but definitely in the reboot, they made they tried to make a more interesting character by going like. We recovered this body and it still has a conscience in there, but it has no control over what its body is doing. Yeah. Um, so that's that's an interesting thing to build a game around if they can work out a way to, you know, same way that Venom works as an idea of a character. Yeah. Um, there's a good soul inside a, an awful killing machine. Totally, um, yeah. And will that find ways to come out at different points? It could make an interesting narrative. Yeah, uh, I'm seeing in chat um, lots of people saying I watched that too young, and then R- Rick James just said I think all of us watched it way too early, and I think that's <laughs> yeah. a, I think that's a rite of passage for RoboCop is every 12 year old watched RoboCop, and there was like Jesus fucking Christ, um, uh, and 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 also someone pointed out and uh, Whimsy Bobbins who said RoboCop is satire, and that's that's very true. It will be interesting to see if they double down. Like I'm worried that the and I have nothing to base this on other than the other two games, the developer, which were not very critically well-received, which was Terminator and Rambo. <laughs> but, like, that both... In fact, both... Uh, well, particularly Terminator is, like, a social commentary, and that's not how that game came across. And so the idea <laughs> that it is, like, a satire could be lost in sort of, like, uh, shoot 'em up action. Peter Burns. My dad is watching. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Burnsy767 says, Not on my watch would you watch an hour movie. I blame mum. Yeah, uh, and I, I probably watched it at like the Clark's house or something. So give them a call. I was going to say, yeah, like it's <laughs> you went. This is your version of me going to Ben Jennings' house when I was thirteen, and we watched the first fifteen minutes of Scream, and then Ben's mum walked in and goes, "What the hell is this?" What and then the turned f- it off, <laughs> yeah. and, and and we both secretly were like, "Thank you, Ben's mum, for turning that off." But we all acted like, "Oh no, come oh, on, we want to watch that." But so actually, that. it fucked us up real nice, and we did not want to finish <laughs> that film. Uh, good. All right. Well, that is literally all the video game news that happened this week. There is nothing more you need to know. Mm.